Yo, 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 what up, Mr. Zoo Nation, a.k.a. Savage Armor June Giraffa, coming at you with another episode of the Mega Colony Trap House. Alright, so, uh, I have a little bit of sad news, and it's basically the reason why I haven't been doing a video in a while. My video editor sucks. Arrgh! When I mean it sucks, arrgh! It sucks, arrgh! So much that I, you know, this is going to be my last video doing anything on this video editor. I kind of found another one I need to, I'm still testing out, like, how to use it and whatnot. So, um, I wanted to put pictures, and I wanted to put the effects of the cards and all this other stuff on, like, the video, but, um... Every time I do that, my video editor just wants to be a bitch because it wants to glitch out, and it it, it takes up a lot more time than it should have. And honestly, there's like a bunch of videos that I should have been doing. Like every Tuesday, I should have been coming out with a deck profile, but I have not been doing that because of the video editing and the video editor. And not only that, it's also um. The, the ban list, I wanted to come up with my honest opinion on the ban list. I still have the recording of that, so I will be doing that. But that particular video and this one will be... No, just this one. Fuck that. Um, I'm going to definitely re... I'm going to definitely upload my opinions on the, uh, the ban list. But honestly, I have another... I have a project that I'm coming up with. Um, it's basically going to be about, um, Premium Collection 2020. It's going to be put into five parts. Um, I'm going to briefly explain that in a little bit. And honestly, is I have, I, I'm, I'm testing out this new video editor. I'm hoping it doesn't glitch out like this one is doing. And I, I this is going to be my last one. I was, like I said, I was going to put, like, the text of each card that I was going to review and whatnot. And I'm just going to put all of the effects in the description. That's what I'm just going to do. Uh, follow along, do whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I wanted this to look as professional as possible, and I just cannot because of computer problems and because of video editing problems and everything else. So, forgive me for that. Especially if you're new to the channel and everything else like that. I do have some gameplay up for you. So hopefully you enjoy as I ramble about these six particular cards in general. And give my overall score and all this other stuff. But before I start, I wanted to quickly explain what I'm going to be doing as far as Premium Collection 2020. As far as my predictions and everything else. So um, I'm going to, like I said... I want to put up the five parts. Um, the first part is going to be reviewing everything that went wrong in Premium Collection 2019. Because, like, let's be real. Premium Collection 2019 was a clusterfuck. Like, let's be real on that. Um, and then each of the other four parts, I'm going to be rev I'm going to be talking about each clan based on nationality. So... Um, part one is going to be about all the clans in the United Sanctuary. Um, part two is going to be all of the clans based on the Dragonic Empire. Um, part three is going to be all of the Dark Zone clans in the, uh, the Maginolia, Maginolia, whatever the water one is. And the last one is going to be, of course, the Zoo Nation and the Stargate. So, um, all the clans I'm going to be talking about is just going to be, um, it's going to be basically talking about something that each of those clans need that hopefully will show up in Premium Collection 2020. I highly doubt it, but those are just my honest opinions. Like I said, it's going to be a five-part video. I'm going to be planning on uploading it maybe not this week, but next week. I mean, but the, I mean, not next week, but the week after next. So, I want to say, um, the thirteenth of April, um, all the way up to the seventeenth of April. 
So one video a day, 13th to the 17th. That's that's technically the plan. If anything goes wrong, it's going to be the week after. So the 20th through the 24th. But right now, I plan on doing the 13th through the 17th. I plan to do one day each talking about Premium Collection 2020. So um, outside of that, I've rambled on long enough. Let's get to the review of these cards. We got Alt Mall, Asha, and Chrono Jet. Which one is better? Which one came out of the top? What do I think about these cards and everything else? Um, we're just gonna like shoot. We're gonna just gonna shoot through it and everything like this, so we don't make the um, thing too long. So, without further ado, let's get it. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. All right. Now, um, we're going to be talking about Blue Sky Knight Altmau. We're going to be talking about him first. Basically, he has two effects. Uh, his first effect is during the turn, if you have no face-up cards in your damage zone, this unit gets plus 15k in a critical. Um, the second ability, uh, Counter Blast 1, discard a card from your hand. Search your deck for up to two grade 2 cards, reveal them, put them to your hand, and shuffle your deck. This is the trial deck, Alt Mile, just to let you know now. Here's the thing. Um, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to go to the other one to give my actual thought on it. But I just want to say I like the second effect. The second effect is good. But also notice that it does say grade two cards. So that means you can search out for the uh, for the other thing, for the, the quick shield and whatever the little thing is called, you know, you know what I mean. But anyway, um, you could you could search out for those, which is actually pretty interesting because it doesn't say units. If it said units, then it would just be strictly grade two units, but it doesn't. Um, you do have to discard a card, which is sad, but it's worth it. You're searching for two cards, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. <laughs> Um, that first effect, however, is very controversial, but seeing that Aerial Divine Knight Alt Mile has a similar effect, I'm going to basically lump it up. So, um, Aerial Divine Knight Alt Mile, um, the first effect is if you have no face of cards in your damage zone, all of your grade 2 units get power 10k and um, 5k shield, and if your soul has a card with Alt Mile in his card name, those units get plus one critical. Then his second ability is Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, call up the two, no, call up the one grade two each from your deck and your drop zone to Rearguard Circle and shelf your deck. Again, the second ability is interesting because now you get to call from both the grave and the deck. So that's more deck thinning for deck winning and everything else in between. But here is my issue. It is not having face-up cards in your damage zone. So you mean to tell me that one of the major issues of Royal Paladins this whole time was the fact that they didn't have no counter charge unit so, if you basically, once you ran a counter blast, you were basically SOL, which was a major issue. I mean, one of the major things that every World Paladin player wanted to get was some type of counter charge unit, which they did eventually get. But, you mean to tell me that now that we have a counter charge unit, we have to have no face of counter blast? In order for this shit to work, are you serious? Are you kidding me? I mean that that is so ass backwards. It's ridiculous. So ass backwards. But it is kind of a little bit worth it. Sad to say, it, it, it's a little bit worth it because, um, looking at the trial deck version, you do get uh, it is a rearguard skill. Where you get the power plus 15 and everything else like that, it is a rear guard skill. So that is pretty much one of the major good things about it. Um oh wait, wait, I forgot you don't get a critical. I forgot you don't get a critical. So 
That first effect where it say you get power plus 15, you don't get a critical. But it is interesting if you put on a force too, then you'll get a critical. But <laughs> so sorry about that. I, I needed to correct myself on that. I had to look at it, you know, twice just to make sure. But yeah, um, you get power plus 15. And basically, you get a critical on the second one, the Area Divine Knight, um, if you have a car with Altmaul in his name. So, all that is pretty good, but again, no face-up counterblast. Here's what I, here's what I look at it by. Um, you basically have to go all out. And not only go all out, you also have to um, waste all of your resources... Just to get this power plus 15, and for all of your grade 2 units, um, power 10k um, and 5k shield. Um, luckily, um, that also goes towards your opponent's turn as well. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing, too. Um, that second, that second uh, Aerial Divine Knight's uh, first ability, not the trial deck one. The trial deck one is a uh, during your turn only. So you could use the trial deck one on the rear guard circle, which is actually pretty good. Um, I do like that. But uh that the fact that everything has to be face or the fact that you have to have no face of counter blast is 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 really killing it. But to be fair, it's pretty easy to get into that because all of Royal Paladin's best units are usually Counter Blast 1 anyway. So it's not completely bad, but it is kind of bad in a way, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, overall, uh, I like both of these units. They're pretty good. I feel like Alt Mall is going to be the one that everybody's going to be talking about. Right now, I kind of, um, from what I'm hearing from the community, a lot of people wants to play alt mall, and that's completely understandable because both Chrono Jet and Asha kind of sort of have like slight faults to each other, so it, it kind of makes sense. This is kind of more like the lesser evil. Of course, you have to have no face of counter blast though, but that's worth it. That's honestly worth it. Um, to get uh more power for your grade twos and more power for alt mall. On the rear guard circle, that that's worth it. And you get to search out grade twos. You get to search out two grade twos with the trial deck one, and you get to call two grade twos, one from the deck and one from the drop zone. So honestly, that's a win-win situation in a way. When you think about it, that that that's a one for one. So they're pretty good. I can see why everybody wants to play all mile. But moving on. We're going to Chrono Jet Dragon and Chrono Dragon next stage. So, Chrono Jet Dragon technically has the ability of all the major grade 3 gear chronicle units. You discard one or more cards with the summoner grades being 3 or greater for your hand. You search out the one grade 4 card, ride it at stand, shuffle your deck at the end of your turn, retire that unit, and ride a grade 3 from your soul as rest. But, unlike... um. Unlike the other two, this one actually has a second effect, which is both on Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. So when he attacks, you counter blast one into the end of that battle. Um, that unit get, this unit gets plus 5k, and your opponent cannot call Sentinels from his or her hand. So it may not is a little bit stronger compared to his original one, where it was what GB2. When it attacked, and it's like a Vanguard only skill, um, it gets power plus five, and your opponent can't call great ones or greater from hand. Well, this one is just kind of saying, oh, you can't call Sentinels at all. So it's a pretty good guard restrictor regardless. And seeing that you are going to be using a lot of Force One markers in general, it, it makes sense that this will be very, very good. Um, then you have Next Stage. Which is very controversial, and I'll tell you in a minute after it's reading its effect. Uh, at the end of the battle that it attacked the Great Three or Greater Vanguard, if your soul has a Chrono Jet Dragon, um, discard two cards in your hand, retire this unit, ride a Chrono Jet Dragon from your soul as stand, and until the end of that battle and into the turn, that unit gets power plus 15 
and you cannot ride. Understandable. So it's kind of sort of similar to the original skill, but instead of discarding three, you are discarding two. And you're able to get power plus 15. So using Chrono Jet's uh, counter blast skill, he's going to be um, power plus 20k before counting the Force 1 markers and before counting whatever unit is boosting it. So that's actually pretty good. Um, but here's the controversial thing. It's the, it's the restriction. So if your opponent's not at grade 3, you can't use next stage effect at all. So what makes it controversial is what happens if you're on your Chrono Jet turn and your opponent is at grade 2. Um, basically, what this would do, what some people are saying is they want to put Chrono Fang in there as well. That way, Chrono Fang, if you if you do so happen to come to the situation, Chrono Fang will go into rebellion uh, while your opponent is at grade two, and you'll use Chrono Jet on your second grade three turn and go into next and go into next stage, which. Actually, isn't too bad of a strategy, but here's the thing: it's not perfect. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to remember that you're not always going to get that particular strategy. Um, for a prime example, me playing Mega Colony, one of my strategies is going into Sakoma two first and riding um Sakoma, you know, riding Gun and Kaleo on top of Sakoma Tooth, therefore, before you mill your first card, you have to discard a card from your hand, which, let's be real, 90% of the time is going to be a grade zero. So, when you put into that consideration, I'm not always going to be riding into Sakoma Tooth first and then Gun and Kaleo second. Sometimes, I won't even see Sakoma Tooth until late game, even with the grade three searchers, might I add, and I'm just going to see Gun and Kaleo first, and I have no choice but to just continuously ride into Gun and Kaleo instead of like wasting a turn going from Gun and Kaleo to Sakoma to to another Gun and Kaleo or anything else like that. No, that's that's too much time. I might as well just stay on Gun and Kaleo that whole particular time. So it's kind of sort of the same thing with this. You're not always going to get Chrono Fang first and then get. Chrono Jet second, especially in Gear Chronicles, seeing how cluttered up that deck already is when it comes to ratios. Like, it can work, but it's not going to be perfect. My thing is, what if your opponent's still at grade two and you don't have Chrono Fane to go into, but you have Chrono Jet to go into? When you put it into a consideration where if you're only counting let's say the trial decks in the next, in the try three set, you only have Metallica Phoenix and next stage to work with. I mean, yes, there's like the other ones that comes from the older sets, but if you're put into a scenario where somebody new is coming to the game, they want to play Chrono Jet. All they have to work with is the try three set that came out and the trial deck. They don't have Astro Force to work with. They don't have Genius Strategy to work with. Um, they only have those particular two. What are they going to do? They just have no choice but going to Metallica Phoenix. Um, and even then, you know, Rebellion doesn't work outside of Chrono Fang. Um, Next Stage doesn't work without Chrono Jet. While... You know, it makes sense on paper, but it, it feels like one of those things where it can go so left-south. Like, especially if the game drags on. Like, trust me, there's going to be times when the game is going to drag on, and you're like, fuck, I have no Chrono Fangs, but all I have is Rebellion left to go into, and I'm on Chrono Jet. What what am I going to do? Um... Sadly, that's like the worst case scenario, sadly, but it, it can happen. It can happen. A lot of bad scenarios could normally happen, but that's just me. That's probably me 
overthinking everything and whatnot. But I mean, let's be real, that can happen. Sadly, that can happen. So I'm not going to say it's completely bad. It's not a really a bad card. It's a really good card. It's just that particular scenario is the thing that worries me. Like, luckily, I'm not really trying to play Chrono Jet slash Chrono Fang, so it's not really going to affect me that much, though. But if I was going into that, that would be my biggest concern. All right, last but not least, Asha. So, um, Trial Deck Asha has both a Vanguard and Rearguard skill. Uh, when placed, Counter Blast 1, call up the two plant tokens of Rearguard Circle, and this unit gets 10k power to the end of the turn. And his second ability, retire three rear guards and call an Asha Fla uh, Fairy Token to the rear guard circle. So before we get to the Fairy Token, um, basically her first effect is kind of sort of similar to um, Trailing Rolls, except for Trailing Rolls don't get a Counter Blast and, a, and she don't get a 10k power either. So, I mean, it's kind of sort of the same card in a way. It's just that the only difference is you have to waste a Counter Blast for this. And you get Power Plus 10k. Um, that's on both Vanguard and Rearguard. But the Asha Fairy Token. So, this is how this works. Um, whenever the Asha Fairy Token attacks, it basically gets the same amount of attack in the same amount of criticals as the Vanguard Ashik has. Um, so, if you attack with Vanguard Asha, um, let's say one of your friend, your opponent says, like, two to pass, uh, you miss the first one, but the second one is a critical trigger. You give all effects to your Vanguard Asha, and let's say you boost it with... Let's say... Let's say you boost it with like an AK. You boost it with an AK. So that means that Asha will become like a 31K because of her skill. And then she'll become 41K because of the critical trigger. So when your um, Asha Fairy Token attacks, she basically becomes 41K with two criticals. That's kind of sort of how it works. So as long as. um. When you have your Asha Fairy Token attacks, you have an Asha Vanguard. She basically gets Asha's um, attack and she gets her critical, which is actually pretty good. Because now you could tend it. <laughs> oh my God. There's so much shit you can actually do with this. Because now, let's say your opponent goes to two pass, you don't have to worry about, oh yeah, maybe. Um, you don't have to worry about the cards in the hand because they're just going to leave anyway. It's going to be like, oh, yeah, um, all effects of Asha, all effects of Asha. You don't have to be like, oh, well, maybe I should actually put a lot more pressure on my other two attacks. So I'm just going to give 10K to, I'm going to give whatever trigger to, you know, one of my rear guards and whatnot. Nah, you don't have to do that. With the Asha thing, it works on itself. She's basically a mini Ultima, which is hilarious. I love it. <laughs> it is stupid. But the second one makes it even worse. So the second one, Dreaming spin, Dream Spinning um, Asha. So during your turn, if you have two or more face units with Asha in her card name, this unit gets power 10k. If you have three or more, it gets power plus one critical. Um, not power plus one critical. It gets plus one critical. And then, um, your other effect is Soul Blast 1, retire two rear guards, and call an Asha Fairy, Flower Fairy token to the rear guard circle, which is basically the same thing. So instead of retiring three rear guards, you're retiring two rear guards and Soul Blast in one. So seeing that the Trial Deck Asha can be used on the rear guard circle, you could technically just get that power 10k and a critical on your first grade three turn. So now it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a fairy token on one side, and then on the other side, I'm just gonna call my other grade three Asha. 
which is basically just going to get an extra 10K. And so your whole front row is just going to be, you know, built up. On top of that, what you also could do is call the trial deck Asha um, to the back row of your Vanguard. Because there is a grade two that did come out. Um, I have to look up the name. I'll put the name in the description. Um, basically what it does is if you have um another unit with the same name as your unit on your Vanguard circle, um, all of your units get boost. It, it was basically the same card that was uh, released with Asha, which is going to be hilarious as fuck. Like this, like the whole Asha engine in general is hilarious as fuck. That's what I like about it. That's like the thing I like the most about it. It's hilarious. Like, I love it. So, let me see. I'm actually close to the car right now. Oh, okay. So, it's called Osmantis Maiden Ant Anilma? Anilma? Um, and Anil. Yeah, I'm going to just call it Anilma. So, it has the first effect where it says. When place, uh, counter blast one, soul blast one, draw a card, and call up the one plant token. Um, and the second one is if you have a rear guard on your rear guard circle with the same name as your grade three or greater vanguard, all of your units get boost. So you call that um, fairy token to the rear guard circle. Um, you call like the trial deck Asha into the back of your vanguard. And then with the grade 2's effect, everybody gets boost. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is so stupid. So, at the end of the day, it's going to be like, what, 26 plus a 10K, 36 plus a 10K from the Asha in the back row, 40. Yeah, damn, that's going to be like 46 with two crits. This is not counting the the force one marker if you're running force one, and this is not counting triggers. This is all before triggers. So when you're so all before triggers, when your um fairy token is going to attack, it's going to be forty six with two criticals. Oh my god, this is so stupid. Forty six with two criticals, man. This is amazing, man. I. I I'm uh, I'm amazed. I I definitely cannot wait to play Asha. Y'all can keep all mile. I'm playing Asha. I don't give a fuck. I'm playing Asha. But anyway, overall, what do I get? What do I rate all of these units? I'm sad to say, Asha is the better one of the three. And this is not me being biased as a Neo Nectar player. This is me being like. What wrong can you go with this card? What wrong can you go with this card? Like, I know, like, no, there's no such thing as a perfect strategy, but seriously, what wrong can you go with this card? The problem with Alt Mall is you have to, um, with the problem with Alt Malls, you have to overextend. And overextending, while it may not be a complete bad thing, the biggest fear is not killing off your opponent. Um, at the same time, uh, Arrow Divine Knight has to have a card with Alt Mile in his name in order to get the critical, which is understandable. With Next Stage, on the other hand, your opponent also has to be at grade three. Um, that's basically its Achilles heels, is your opponent also has to be at grade three in order for it to work, otherwise it's kind of sort of useless, just a vanilla. I mean, I guess that's what Metallica Phoenix is for. It's supposed to be the vanilla, and it's supposed to be the first one to go into, but that's just me. And even with the newer stuff, it's there's nothing you can really do about it, besides like mixing it up with Colonel Fane. With Asha, on the other hand, you know, you have a lot to work with. You still have the tokens to work with. You still have the token rush with all the up with all the older stuff. I mean, hell, you don't even have to play 
the 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 dreaming spinning Asha, you can still play like the trial deck one and still use some of the other grade threes that Veo Nectar has to offer. Fruit Dragon. Fucking Fruit Dragon. He gets uh he gets the sum total of the original attack of all the all the tokens on your field. Keep in mind that the Asha Fairy token's base is 13. So just with the Asha Fairy token existing, he is going to be 26k on my turn. That's not counting whatever other tokens I have on the field. It's a win-win situation. And then of course you have all the grade 2s and all the grade 1s that can gain tokens, so the retire cost isn't really going to be that bad when you really think about it. Um, at the same time, <laughs> there, there's much to, oh, there's Arboros. Even with using both Ashas, I know there's going to be like a lot of Neo Nectar players that's going to be playing two Arboros, or that's what I'm thinking, or that's what I, I, I guess. They're going to be playing two Arboros, because Arboros could be also used on the rear guard circle, and it can make two tokens. So, <laughs> you can get everything with that particular unit in general. I love it, I love it, I love it. But, with that being said, um, I want to give Blue Sky Night All Mall um, an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give Air Divine Night All Mall an 8.5 out of 10. I'm going to give Chrono Jet um, an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give Next Stage a 7 out of 10. And I'm going to give um, uh, Renoculus Flower Maiden Asha. I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give Dreaming Spin Renoculus Asha a 9 out of 10. That's kind of sort of how I feel about all the units. Um, take it where you be it. Uh, for all the people who's like saying that, oh yeah, Austin's gonna be like the worst one, and then over there playing with all Maul or Chrono Jet, you know what I'm gonna be? I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like Thanos. Not when he got snapped, reverse snapped, but I'm gonna be Thanos. I'm just gonna be waiting on that rock, waiting to clap them cheeks. So with that being said. My name is Mr. Zoo Nation, a.k.a. Savage on the Jungle Rafa, signing out.